It is early morning, Saturday, I think. It's 10 to 6 uh, by WA time. And just behind us here is the West Australian border. So we are officially on our way home. What do you guys reckon? Mm. 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 All the grunts. All the grunts. These guys don't do morning so good. Me and I Cam, do. me and I'm Cam, fine. we're fine. I'm, hey, I'm fine here. in the morning. I just need a bit of food and coffee. <laughs> yeah, three of them. If you deprive later. me of that, then I'm not so good. <laughs> By food and coffee, he means three coffees and all the food. Anyway, it's lovely here. It's pleasant. It's not too cold now already. Even though we look like we're freezing to death. Yeah, you guys are all wearing jumpers. I am acclimatized. <laughs> I just put mine on for aesthetics. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's the hobo look. Alright, next stop is the roadhouse of that place I can't pronounce. It's on the signpost yeah, behind you. Right there. Yeah, can anyone pronounce it yet? I think you got exactly close. Exactly what it was. <laughs> what was yours, Gev? Um <laughs> Il Kulka. Il Kulka? <laughs> Only because I'm looking at the sign. Even uh, even when I was looking that at that place, it's read it. Read I guarantee it it's wrong, and someone will correct you. Yeah, yeah. We will be corrected shortly, uh, and then I'll get back to you with what it really means. The grammar until... Nazis will descend. <laughs> All right, we're going to make some K's because the fuel station shuts at lunchtime, and we've got 163 K's to go according to the sign, and it's been a bit slow going. So uh, we're going to make a move. See you on the other side. Central time, they opened 15 minutes ago. We're just figuring out why, trying to figure out why they burn more, four, more fuel, or if they burn more four fuel than four wheel drive than two wheel drive. Letting go of all my heavy load. I waited for the moment to unfold. Yeah, it's okay. Nobody's gone to make me feel. So far, so good. Very, very new. No reception. <laughs> I reckon that's probably the guy. Ah. <laughs> I can, I got plenty of fuel. You got plenty of fuel? <laughs> So you still got enough to make it, Gav, even though I said you were burning more than what you No, nah, it's just fallen short of that now. So no, you haven't got plenty of places to go there. <laughs> no, I can go to the highway. What oh. sort of leader are you doing? Uh, 20. Oh, okay, right, yeah. I'm getting about 15.6 out of this thing. Yeah, yeah. But not as, not as great big thumping engine as that thing's got in it. What's that? Not pushing too much, as much weight as this either. Oh. Filming. <laughs> you're filming now? Yeah, I'm filming right now. Oh shit, sorry. <laughs>
So El Kulka Roadhouse, we've just come out of there. That's that's only 30 odd k's down the road from here, from memory. Um, I haven't been doing the navigating. I've been sitting in the passenger seat, so I'm not on top of it as well as I usually am. Uh, El Kulka was surprisingly good. Community service stations can sometimes look a little bit rough to the uninitiated, I suppose you could say. But uh, that place looks brand new and in really good nick. And, and they've got a good selection of stores there, diesel, opal, petrol, and and uh, and a really nice uh, camp manager too. So uh, check, out, uh, check out some of the artwork and the facilities when you're in the area. They're getting some tag along tours up and running. Um, we did. We were booked in to do some tag along tours with them, like like cultural tours, so the uh, locals could show us around. Uh, but unfortunately, they they're not there at the moment. They've got some cultural business down the road uh, at the community, about 180 k's away. So that's where all the locals are at the moment. And uh, so there was no one available to take us through there, which is a bit of a shame. But I'm definitely coming back. So I uh, I will not miss that next time. They've only just started these cultural tours. Um, uh, we would have been the very first, basically, apart from uh, a mate of mine uh, who's a journalist that uh, I'll, I'll link his article in, in the description here for you because he did a fantastic article and went out with them. And he's the one that told me about the, uh, the cultural tours that they've just started kicking off. Yeah, have a look around the, the plane, the crash site. Enjoy the shots of the Il Kulka. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm gonna do that again. I'm sure he did that deliberately because he knows I'm filming. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. So just behind me is the crash plane that you can come and have a look at when you're on the Amberdell Highway. She's uh, pretty well intact, whoever flew that. Uh, did a good job of landing it, I think, given the conditions. Don't know if they ran out of fuel or, uh, or some sort of mechanical issue, but they're not far away from the community. So, you know, if, if something like this is gonna happen, quite often it'll be on takeoff uh, or landing. Those are the two most dangerous periods of flight for anyone, really. Um, but they did a good job of landing it because this terrain isn't all that easy and she's fairly intact, really. Someone's pinched the engines. That might have been uh, Goldfields Air Services that own the plane. The engines might have still been in good nick, or so they've kept them for spare parts or, uh, or uh, to sell them on to someone else. Um, Ryan, as you can see in the background there, climbing all over it to get some shots. He's a bit of a wild man. He, he's, he's, uh, he doesn't know it's chock a block full of snakes yet. We'll wait till he <laughs> finds that out for himself before he, uh, before we tell him. So, it's only a detour of what do you reckon, Cam? Five k's? I think it was eight. Eight k's. Yeah. So it's only a detour, detour of eight k's off the track. So it's a nice, easy one to come out and have as a lunch stop or even a morning camping spot if you want something a little bit interesting nearby to have a look at. So. One of the many interesting things on the Amberdell. Right, we've got the drone up. We're gonna give you some nice aerial shots of the area and you might even be able to see, sometimes with a plane crash, you can see where it's stoved in and, and there's still a bit of a mark in the in the trees. The trees are a lot younger and, and smaller sometimes. So we'll, we'll have a look and, and maybe we can see what angle it come in and which direction it was going at the time. Right. Off to the next bit, after some lunch. Maybe, we'll see how we feel. It's a bit hot today, 36 degrees. So we've picked a good time of year to come. It's been magic and green too. Talk to you later. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's a nice part of the desert too, actually. I like this landscape and it's quite curious to find a uh, reach plane here. Thanks for fly again. Um, yeah. Got any spanners? We'll yeah, get a go. A little bit of work. Yeah. Dirty fuel, I reckon. Dare say it wouldn't have ran out, but uh, probably landed nearby at one of the communities. Got some dirty fuel, which caused the engines to splutter and give out on the way down. And he's probably come in that way, and then last minute he's clipped, uh, clipped something on the right-hand wing, which has turned it to where it is now. 
because ideal situation you wouldn't land between the dunes you'd land along them so straight in through there hit a tree last minute turned it tore the wing off that wing's intact this thing's all gone so that's what it would have done these are the same no <laughs> no 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 oh, not again no oh, there's it. these are the same ones I Yes! Uh, yeah. So I'll hang here so they stay off to the side. Yeah, good idea. Family yeah. of four that time. Camel, camel, camel to the left. <laughs> So we have just arrived at uh, Neil's Junction where the Connie Sioux crosses the Amberdell Highway. Uh, we've actually done a huge amount of K's today. This track keeps surprising me for uh, how quick you can do it. Um, yeah, we were averaging 60 kilometers an hour today, which is a little strange for me through the bush tracks. Uh, I'm not used to uh, that sort of a pace, you know, 20, 20, 30 k's is about mine, but you can quite safely travel this track at 60 k's an hour with heaps of room to see and, and uh, yeah, bizarre. So we've actually crossed the WA border today, and then we've also crossed the halfway point of this particular trip. Um, and we're now 900 and, 990 k's through the track and we did nearly 250 300 of those k's just today which blew me away but we did it really easy the corrugations are easy that i would call them light to medium and uh the the track's very straight which is what the gun barrel construction crew are famous for so no surprises there but uh, even when it comes to the sand dunes, I was expecting more sand dunes, even though we are going parallel to them. Um, so, but there's still a few. We're having fun. We are camped up here. Uh, there's a little plaque there saying Steve's Place. I need to look that up and figure out what that's all about, because I don't actually know right now. But this campground has tables, shelter, potable water, and a toilet system. I normally avoid these sorts of things, but on this particular track, it's so remote, we've only seen three cars. Three cars only since, uh, well, since, what was it, four days ago when we left Cooper Beatty. So, and two of those cars were traveling together. Um, so it is absolutely remote and you can go weeks without seeing anyone. Talking today with the uh, manager of the roadhouse, he said sometimes he can go a month without anyone coming through for fuel. So it uh, it is living up to its reputation of being remote. Couple of big days for the boys. Poor Cam, he's got a headache. So he's up there having a snooze, trying to sleep it off. Could have been the corrugations, could have been, could have been anything. Um, Gav's over there, he's cooking us up one of his legendary feeds right now. He's, uh, he's been taking responsibility of uh, being head chef for us and doing an amazing job. We are having a campfire roast tonight cooked in the, uh, cooked in the pot. So I'm looking forward to trying that because I don't normally, as you know, eat so luxuriously. And Ryan is off uh, taking pictures basically he's making the most of this magnificent sunset that we've got here and he's off uh, taking some photos which is what we're all here to do this is a content trip for us uh, to get all the photos and video and, and fun stuff to make uh, great content for you guys for the year to come so uh, I am uploading another let's see a hundred odd gig 
a video today. So with the four of us, we've actually been collecting a huge amount of footage and I can't wait to show you guys because it's absolutely stunning stuff. Um, but it is a heavy workload. At least 100 gig a day of footage is being captured. So it's uh, every, every night almost as best we can. I try and get in there and um, upload everything to SSDs and hard drives to keep it safe. Um, but we haven't actually done it for two nights. So we got here about four o'clock. The sun was, or it was already quite dark um, because of the cloud cover. It is now, it's only quarter past five and it's this dark already. So uh, looking forward to another good night around the campfire. I think uh, if we twist his arm, we might be able to get Gav to bring out the guitar, uh, if we're lucky. And uh, I'll check back in with you tomorrow, where we're going to go and check out uh, a couple more awesome spots that I think you'll enjoy. Anyway, talk to you soon.